After watching this video, you have yet another reason to appreciate why you invested into Skahoy controllers. We'll be working with the Colorfly and then we'll be adding a waveboard controller to expand it. But first, let's look at what Colorfly can do on its own. We have a uh, ATEM switcher with some cameras, imaginary cameras that we think are connected to it and we want to shade those. Well, you can, uh, many people use the software control. ASM software control has a pretty nice UI where you see all the cameras that could be connected to your ASM switch are lined up and each of these cameras will receive control over the SDI return feed to the camera. So when you uh, use your mouse to uh, change this, you um, actually change the lens connected to the camera. Now, inside the Colorfly, I have already added these cameras. They are added in a way so that like we have a main base ATEM and then for each of these with the same IP address we add a camera and each of these instances of a camera is in a sense a copy of the ATEM switcher but I choose the model ID to be the studio camera 4K from Blackmagic Design. You can see that we have many other models so it's not that which is the question it's just picking the right model that will give you specific features specific value ranges for such as your uh, Kelvin degrees or your ISO speeds and what, el what else is, is different between these cameras there are actually differences and those you can actually see in the parameter list here so if you if you go into this one now you see it for the studio camera but you can kind of study it for all the other ones that there are some differences between them all right. Let's go back here. The camera ID is super important. This is the number that you need make to, to uh, set right to align with the camera number inside of here. So hype, the camera called hype is number three. All right, and I've done that for these like 16 cameras. If I wanted to add camera number 17, I would just duplicate this one. I would then change it into 17 and uh, also 17 down here. So the top one is just a label, but now I have like, a uh, 17th camera added. The color flag is currently blank, so it's just looking as you see, and I go to, uh, let me see, generic camera control would be a good pick, as I have done that. We already see something in this place, but we basically need to add a camera. So we'll add camera number one, and you see the fader runs into position immediately. So uh, if I use my fader, you can see that I'm able to change it. I can also adjust the lift, which is like the horizontal component of this like 2D joystick that they put into the software. Let's go back here and then add some more. And now comes a pro tip. If you hold down your shift key, you will be able to add multiple cameras. So let's just say, that we add four, five, and six, seven, et cetera, eight, nine. Okay, I'm just gonna stop here because there's no point in adding much more than this at this point. I wanna show you how this already works. Uh, first of all, what is this camera selector doing? You might ask, because as we now go back into the software UI, you can see as I'm moving faders, I have control of the first four cameras and if I, Scroll a little bit. Let's just check what happens when I press the camera paging button. I now get to camera uh, eight, uh, five to eight, and uh, those I can also shade, as you can see, and also change the lift values, which are the horizontal component. If I press the camera selector again, I'll page up to uh, the, the third page, which is camera nine, and that's about as many as I added. So if we scroll vertic uh, horizontally, you see camera nine, and then I'm back to like one. You can basically page forth and back. You can also press the sides. That is like a four-way button. So you can go forth and back between the two, two first pages by rocking your finger over the button. All right. Or you can just cycle through by pressing the low edge. The camera selector next to is what gives you access to all the settings for each individual camera. So let's say we want to do camera number eight here. This is where we want to adjust the lift gamma gain value. So we already have lift shown here. Let's move to lift and then you can see how adjusting these values is immediately available to me here. I can also open it up if you want to see all the others. Then I can go to gamma and I have gamma values I can change. And we can also on the first page we have the gain values that I can adjust. All right. So that's all great. But in this video, I want to show you how cool it would be if you could extend. Because you can imagine if you had like 17 cameras, you might want to have access to more of these cameras immediately with the faders. And that can be done if you add a Waveboard Mini. So in the Skahoy style of magnetically connected controllers, we'll just click in the Waveboard Mini. And now we'll make this into one big surface that is just cohesive connected all faders responding synchronously to what's happening 
And it's so easy. Just watch what I'm doing right now. I'm keeping all my devices set up, but I'm just changing over to the Waveboard Mini configuration. So this is like pre-made, changing over to this one. And all I need to do now is to select a new panel. So I'll just add panel here. And it already looks on the network and it finds that Waveboard Mini is sitting here on the network waiting for us to connect. Let's do that. So now we're connected to these two panels and now I want to add some cameras. Now watch what's happening, okay? So I do the same, pro tip with the shift key, pressing shift, camera number one, camera two, three, and like slowly these cameras are populating. And now it's getting interesting, right? Because now the Waveboard Mini is kicking in for camera six, seven, eight. And now I'm just continuing adding camera nine, 10, 11, and then 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. All right, so now I have all my cameras added to these two controllers. Are you ready, gentlemen? Ladies and gentlemen, sorry. <laughs> As I'm paging through our f uh, three pages up to camera number 17, I see the faders are just moving in position as I would expect them to, all right? That's just so great, okay? So that is how modularity works. We call this modularity. It means Skyhoy controllers is a little bit like Legos. They can work like you know, each one of them have a use case and they are solo. They can do that job without the, the help of any, any other controller. But in this case, the Waveboard Mini and the Colorfly are perfectly matched together. And even in this case, I was happy to figure out that camera four, you know, these, this camera selector is perfectly extended on the Waveboard Mini because then selecting camera five for adjustment of values over here is now done by these four buttons here. So that's camera eight going to nine. So nine, 10, 11, 12 with these settings over here, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then I'm here, camera 17. There you go. That's modularity for you. Now, if you wonder how is it that the Waveboard knows that it should be available for connectivity with the Colorfly, it is because if you go to its IP address, and now forgive me for forgetting that for a moment. So uh, yeah, you can actually go to the logo sometime. It's going to tell you. Okay, so it's 56. What um, what Skyhoy devices are on your network. And then if we go in here, you see Reactor, the software we are using here, this UI that connects our cameras and our configurations, that UI is stopped. So this application is not running, but the hardware manager and the system manager are. And if you want to use a panel in a modular way like this, what you need to do is to make sure it listens on port and do not listen on socket. The, the, the main unit, the host, the Colorfly, if you go to packages and you look at the hardware manager, it's opposite. It is listening on socket because that's like its internal way to communicate with itself and it's not listening on port. So it's not available to any external connectivity. So that's the difference between whether you have a panel which becomes a guest on a host system or if the panel is the host system itself. Thanks for watching this video. I'm so appreciative of your attention and hope you will subscribe to our channel and also follow us on social media. We have so much content to share with you, so many exciting ways to, to use Skahoy products. And uh, we're telling you all about it in our YouTube channel. So. Um, Please subscribe and watch these and uh, see you around.